It's no secret that this year is the anniversary of the closure of the frontier, the 50th anniversary, and the Chief Minister did not pull back from weaving this into the narrative of his speech to the Committee of 24, saying this was the Spain that had established its policy on Gibraltar and Spain's arguments had to be seen in this light. Workers lost their jobs. Thousands from both sides of the frontier left their families to emigrate looking for work. They formed a diaspora that will never now return home. This was what General Franco and his foreign minister, Senor Castilla, were prepared to do to force us to surrender our land, our precious rock. Indeed, Madam Chair, it is important for members to note that the General Assembly resolutions that distinguish representatives of Spain, repeatedly referred to in interventions before your committee, were adopted following intense lobbying by that same fascist government in Madrid. It is fundamentally important that we remind the people in that building behind you that it didn't work 50 years ago and that they've got to listen not to the interests of the people of Gibraltar but to the voice of the people of Gibraltar and that the future of Gibraltar will be one that we determine ourselves namely in exercise of our own right to determine the future of our nation the right of self-determination that's why it's important to cut back 50 years and tell the people in the C24 who were the same committee that were considering the issue then that there was absolutely no way of this issue being resolved of this uh, matter the Gibraltar matter being taken off their list other than in keeping with the wishes of the people of Gibraltar the Spanish ambassador, Agustin Santos Maraver, used the same argument that Spain has used time and again at, before this UN committee, that uh, Spain's claim to Gibraltar is based on the principle of territorial integrity. Madam Chair, this organization has recognized on numerous occasions the specific nature of the decolonization process in Gibraltar, pointing out that the colonial situation of Gibraltar undermines Spain's territorial integrity. Spain fully shares the doctrine that has repeatedly been established by this organization on this particular matter. But one item which was conspicuous by its absence from the Spanish speech was any mention of Gibraltar as a tax haven. In the tax treaty, Spain rightly recognizes our distinct tax laws and therefore our Parliament's lawmaking capacity. Spain recognizes also our distinct and independent tax authorities as totally independent from those of the United Kingdom. Perhaps most importantly, for the purposes of this committee, Spain has now also recognized the existence and legal status of the Gibraltarians as distinct from British citizens generally. So if you look at some of the more belligerent Spanish speeches of the past uh, few years, there's been mention of uh, drug trafficking, there's been mention of uh, tobacco smuggling, there's been mention of tax evasion and a lack of cooperation by the Gibraltar law enforcement agencies. None of that was true on the part of the Spanish. But they came here and they made those arguments. Look, with the MOUs, what I'm saying is these are issues which have been irritants for both sides and we have now resolved them in a tobacco MOU, in a, a taxation uh, treaty, in a law enforcement um, MOU. All of these things can no longer be used by Spain as a weapon in the context of what they say against us in, to the international community in the C24 or in the General Assembly because we have bits of paper that demonstrate the opposite now. This is one of the valuable aspects of what we have achieved with the tax treaty and with the MOUs. In his address, the SDGG representative, Dennis Matthews, said that some very senior, high-level Spanish advisers have told the Spanish government that there is no merit in their claim. There's a number of people who have been advisers to successive Spanish governments, the PSOE and the PP, who have told them quite bluntly that the Gibraltar's, that the, that the claim that they're making on Gibraltar has no, no you know, no basis, and that if it's taken to an international court, they would lose, which is obviously, and as I said in my speech, is obviously why Spain refuses to go to an international court on the right to self-determination. The Committee of 24 now reports back to the fourth committee, which meets again in October to hear from Gibraltar's delegates once again. Jonathan Sacramento, GBC News, New York.